So uh, how I said uh, the last time, it was Easter Sunday when we uh, uh, preached for public. So for a few months, uh, I was uh, mostly uh, preaching to the camera. So try to be patient with me, uh, all right? You know that saying, if you don't uh, use it, you lose it. Uh, so I'm afraid that I lost my skill uh, now to, uh, to preach. So Jesus said in today's gospel, this is how he finished that. But he explained everything to the disciples in privately. So Jesus shared the parable, and then after he said to the disciples, so now come with me. So I give you a homily. I'm going to explain it to you. So this is what we do every Sunday. We hear the gospel, and then after, in privately, in the homily, try to explain to you, so then you have a full understanding of the message. Recently, I, uh, <clears throat> I read from uh, St. Francis Xavier that he said, be big in little things. And I think this is probably what today's uh, uh, message could describe to us through uh, these parables. One of the ways of hearing that saying, be big in little things, is that we are to do small, a loving and generous heart. This was very much the spirituality of Saint Therese of Lisieux, her little way, as she referred to it. She died very young, 20 uh, convent, yet she did her task there generously and lovingly to her uh, little daily uh, chores, uh, daily uh, task, uh, even though her word was in some ways very small in the convent. But many and many in the whole world, they are following her spirituality of little way. So today's gospel reading, once again, reminded me of the saying of St. Francis Xavier, be big in small things. Jesus speaks uh, two parables uh, today, uh, which reveal a thing of the mystery of the kingdom of God. So when we uh, hear the term kingdom of think, of the kingdom of heaven. Life about entering the kingdom of God beyond this earthly life. Yet, for Jesus, the kingdom of God was also, he began his public ministry, he declared was coming when Jesus healed the sick, forgave sinners, shared Proclaim the good news of God's unconditional love with everyone. And we can go on. We go through the scripture. We see whenever into our world, through community of believers, that, that is Jesus, primarily meant by the term kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is more a way of life than a place. So the kingdom of God is more a way of life, a lifestyle, than a place. So whenever we live as God wants us to live, there the kingdom of God is present. Jesus was the person who fully the way God wants us to live. God was pleased with everything that Jesus said and did. Therefore, he said, you are my beloved son. That is why everywhere Jesus went, the kingdom of God was present. So the farmer sows the seed and then does nothing for months, just like you. You sow the seeds in your garden, or maybe you water it, but you do nothing else for months, just you wait. And yet there is a wonderful process of growth going on all the time. 
until he is ready to reap the harvest. So Jesus is saying that when we sow seeds of hope and love, and maybe uh, just this confusion time in the whole world was going on, we can edit the seeds of truth. More is always happening than we uh, actually uh, realize. God uh, is at work there. So the coming of God's kingdom into the world is primarily God's work. We have a role to play. We have to sow the seed. If we do that, if we are big in small things, God will explode that opening in ways beyond all our imagining. So in the parable, it is said of the farmer that he does not know how all this happens. Between his actions of sowing the seed and harvesting the crop, a great deal of activity goes on, which is invisible to him, and which he does not fully understand. There is a great deal in our world, which we do not fully understand, especially nowadays. So many things hidden from us. And what really is bothering, especially me, hidden the truth in front of us. So therefore, we hardly are able to understand what's going on. But you know, what you can't control, surrendering to God. Because he is in charge, even if uh, we can't fully understand what's going on today. So with this parable, the seed growing secretly, Jesus appears to be saying that the kingdom of God can be growing among, among us in a ways that we do not fully uh, understand. Just as the seed the farmer sows in the ground grows towards harvest in ways he does not understand. There is a reassuring, hopeful message here for all of us who may be tempted to discouragement by the slow progress that the ways of God appear to be making in the world. So the spreading of God's reign is ultimately God's work. We have a part to play in the coming of God's way of doing things among us. Just as the former has a role to play in the coming of the final harvest. However, the first parable in the gospel reading wants us against overestimating our role. Saint Paul expresses this very well in the first letter to the Corinthians when he says, neither the one who plant, plants nor the one who waters, uh, waters is anything but only God who gives the growth. And many of you probably will say, uh, so how this relate to my life? For example, you are wondering why many young children, even among your family, your children, why they are not practicing their faith? Why you are not here? Well, when they were little ones, I hope you sow the seed, the faith in their life, in their heart. So the harvesting, when they are come to have a full understanding of the faith, it's in God's hand. This is how this parable relate to our life. But let's see what the master seed tells about us, about the kingdom of God. Which at the time of its uh, sowing is the smallest of all the seeds. Uh, 
and yet once it is sown it grows into the biggest shrub of them all so he, he seems to be saying Jesus that uh, little things uh, as little as a mustard seed have the potential to be a gateway through which the kingdom of God comes into our world. So Jesus is suggesting that we can also little seeds of God's kingdom, young and old. Just as the sowing of a small mustard seed grows into a large plant that spreads far and wide, providing shelter for birds. So our own sowing of tiny seeds of love and hope can have unforeseen effects for good. Faithful, everyday chores, everyday uh, choices to scatter the seed of the Lord's love unleashes the power that can transform the world. So Jesus is encouraging us to appreciate the value of our own small gestures of generosity and loving kindness. He often draw attention to the significance of small gestures in the scripture. So I encourage you uh, that try to read the scripture to the lens of those significance of small gestures. He said on one occasion that if anyone gives a cup of uh, water to a thirsty person, they will not lose their reward. On another occasion, he draw his disciples' attention to a poor widow putting in two small copper coins into the temple treasury. In the parable of the Good Samaritan, the Samaritan traveler was making present the kingdom of God when he took care of someone. And the list can go on and on and on. So try to finish the list during this week. See where the kingdom of God is present in the good and loving choices we make. In our small acts of self-giving service of others. We can feel at times that our own faith is insignificant as small as a mustard seed. But exactly through that small faith, how many times we say, oh, I have a little faith. Oh, I'm losing my little faith. Oh, my faith is so fragile. Oh, I'm afraid about my little faith. This is exactly what Jesus can use it, your little faith, as a mustard seed. So we can feel at times that our own faith is insignificant, as small as a mustard seed. So the parable assures us that the Lord is working in and through such little faith. Our hope can appear to diminish to the size of a mustard seed. So the parable assures us that such hope is enough for the Lord to work with. Your little faith is enough for God to work with. So our life can be assured that our little faith is important in God's eyes. And sometimes we have to learn to be content with the small seeds that we can sow. Trusting that they can bear fruit in ways that will surprise us. So the kingdom of God is something very humble and modest in its origins. We need to learn to appreciate little things and small gestures. 
We may not feel called to be heroes or martyrs every day, but we are called to put a little dignity into each corner of our little world. So there are little seeds of the kingdom that all of us can sow. For example, a friendly gesture towards someone in trouble, a welcoming smile for someone who is alone, a sign of closeness for someone who is in despair, a little ray of joy for a heart full of distress. And we can go on and on. How we can use those insignificant small gestures. So do not be afraid to be big in little things. So this week, just remind yourself, am I carrying the kingdom of God wherever I go, whatever I do? Do not be uh, discouraged if you are only able to do uh, small things. Exactly, that small things, it's enough to build up and, be, and make present the kingdom of God. So be big in little things.